Hey people, yes, Anthony, 4 before diesel. We're having a clean up and there could be some important information in these components that we have kept for way too long before we throw them in the bin. And this container's going in the bin too. So there's not going to be much getting kept. Now, what stories have we got here? Yep, that smells nice. We'll keep that. Okay, this is the lower pulley off your 1KD FTV where that bearing comes out. I think that was uh, used many years ago to work out you know, the, to source that bearing. It was a lot of work to source that bearing. Obviously, we'll keep that. Um, this is the bearing off your uh, timing belt, off your idle or whatever. So, you know what? I would like to keep one of those. <laughs> I've got a real problem keeping stuff, don't I? Um, all this gets replaced every 150,000 Ks in the BFE kit. I said one of those, didn't I? That one can go in the bin. All right, what do we got here? This is some aftermarket, there you go, aftermarket fuel injection components somebody gave me um said i'll check these out right so there's your part numbers for what it is uh i think i might have got two packs did i, oh, I close the bat i was going to say because i remember checking them out i restapled it see i've even sealed it up again so i can't remember what the conclusion was i think it was that at least they weren't that's right you can see i'll grant and see it's copper all right so i'm not so i just say use genuine parts i don't know how much money really you're going to save but for a job that you do once every 10 years, but that's right, I did open it, I did look at the O-ring, um, because if they're not the right material, they can crack up. I think I had a play with the little return line gasket as well, um, and you can see the teeth marks on that, I'll put it in the vise, and I'll put the file on it to confirm it is copper, so whatever, Let, let's just keep that one as well, so we've got a real problem collecting stuff. Now this is those little things we find in uh, bash plates, you know that little breather thing off the uh, act the VSV for your EJR and stuff like that? So when we find any bash plates, we throw it in a container. But you know what? I've seen... So this is where the info comes in. I, people say, oh, this is broken. Oh, I bro or I broke this when I was trying to What do I do? What do I do? Well, this is what you do. Don't worry about it. Throw it in the bin. I'll tell you why, right? As much as it's important because Toyota said, you know, they designed it and uh, put it there. The reason they put it there was because that's what they wanted it to be. Now, at the end of the day, when you've got to pay two or three hundred dollars to replace that unit, and I've seen dozens of vehicles with it already broken and nobody's ever had a problem that I know of, well, you may as well not replace it until you have a problem, right? And if you do, let us know on our Facebook groups, share the information with each other so that we know what goes on. Now, I've got a little container here somewhere caps and stuff so we'll just get all those this is a uh, bunnings department right this is generally originally this started all the nuts and bolts that came off one vehicle that don't belong on it on one of the injectors i've got here but we've added a little bit to it since then so let's not go and say that's that these little things i'll keep those because you know if you lose one you need them <clears throat> so we'll keep those plastic clips okay um broken what's the point of keeping that okay there's going to be a story in here some people are sitting back having a laugh. Here you go. Here's the story. We've got the plug here. Let me just make sure that's all we've got. So caps will keep. Uh, these caps here, yeah, they could come in handy. Battery terminal covers and things, whatever. All this stuff, that can go, mate. We're, I said we're having a clean-up, right? I've got to get rid of some stuff. We're having a clean-up, right? Now, what's going on here? This is important. Now, there's a couple of stories with these plugs. I've had two or three only, okay? So... So what you do if you do have a problem with the wiring, so if some butchers worked on the vehicle and they're pulling on wires, right, that just broke and came off the rest of the way. So they didn't work out well because I was going to show you what's happened here. But we've had them, you know, whether it's chewed by mice, whether people have been rough working on it and pulled these out because they will pull out. I don't want to pull it out yet though. Or you've had a chip that plugs into the common rail or a chip that plugs into the because there's been problems with chips that plug in at the common rail, melting the plug in the sensors, and there's been problems with chips, like the Steinbell that plugs in on the injectors, and the plastic plugs, they just rub, 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 and see what's happened here, right? They just rub through, and that one was, was that almost, I think the plastic was all that was holding. This is the one, so one of these vehicles, you know, I'll get... If you want the information, you go in the inject the information playlist and you can come back and tell me in the comments on this one how good my memory is. But I told you the stories in there, I'm sure. One of them, apparently the story goes, it was worked on about six different diesel workshops before it got to me. They couldn't work out the problem. At the end of the day, what happened was you test everything and it was okay. 
and then you'd start the car and it'd run rough. So what was happening in all the testing, the wire was making contact, but then when the engine diesel vibration, it wasn't making contact, so it was running rough, but you had to have it running. So it was a real pain, but of course I got to it. It didn't take too long, actually. I got to it pretty quickly because a diesel engine is so simple. It's an engine, it's got injectors that controls fuel and compression, ignition, everything all in one. So it's so easy if you've got a misfire, it's either your injector or your injector plug wiring or your injector driver, basically, to put it in simple terms. Okay, but so there was uh, one that rubbed through from a plug. I think that was this one. There was some that rubbed through on mice. Might not have videoed those. Uh, got chewed out, sorry. Um, there was another one. I can't remember. There was one that came in. It was, <clears throat> that's right, I did the injectors on it. So it came in, it was running okay. I did the injectors on it and then, it, oh, yeah, so when I was doing the injectors, I noticed that it had like one strand left holding it. So I might have my stories mixed up. If you want the straight story, then just go to that uh, inject the information playlist and to that one. See you later in the bin as well, right? With all this stuff. See you later. Lucky I've got a big bin, right? Anyway, we're having a clean up. Let's find out what else we've got that you might learn something from before we throw it in the bin and we can never tell you about it again. Okay, here we go, these things. I mean, bloody, why would you keep all these things? I mean, yeah, we've done a few injectors. That's not even... I think we stopped and collecting these years ago. Years ago. So there's no point keeping any of them. Let's just get those all off into the bin. See you later. Bye-bye. They're the uh, fuel line, the caps on the fuel pipes. Oh, look, there's another bucket full here. Like I said, we don't collect these anymore, but there's a few other caps in here that we might want. So we'll get those out. I'm going to sort out these caps and then put these into the bin. These will live to tell a story another day. They've told a few stories, and that's copper as well. It's probably uh, 15 bucks in there, 20 bucks. Here we go. We've got a story here. The old suction control valve, there's a gasket here. Well, the gasket usually should stay on the vehicle when you replace the suction control valve. It doesn't come with a gasket. Everybody knows by now these short ones are rubbish. Okay, and your nuts and bolts and bits and pieces. Don't lose those because I haven't got any spares anymore because I've been keeping them long enough. And the gasket should stay there, but if you've got one of the later pumps with a long SCV already, I believe they don't have a gasket. Let me know in the comments if you find anything different to what I have. Well, this video maybe gets a bit more exciting as it goes back on, but... My diff container, my diff plug container has been full for a long time. So, what happens here is, in case you missed it in the original... I think we've got a playlist on diffs and diffs and lockers and probably includes stuff like this, but I'll just quickly tell you the problems and the solutions. The solution, of course, like always, kon.com.au. Now, what happens with these is people over-tighten them, and it's as simple as that. There's nothing wrong with this design. There's nothing wrong with it at all whatsoever. It's not soft. It's not this. It's not that. It's people over-tighten them, and this is what ends up happening. How do you get it out? The special tool from Kon, or you can get it out with a chisel. Sometimes they come out, like this one came out. Do you think I'm going to put that back in a vehicle, though? No way. Let's sort through them. Some of the ones that look all right will keep. That one's knackered as well. You think I'm going to risk it? No way, mate. If you didn't over tighten it, probably right. Look at that one. That's like a 12 mil rusted out. That's not. That's ridiculous. Let's go through these. Yeah, that one's rubbish as well. Been chiseled out. Look how round that is. Rubbish. This one doesn't look too bad, but in my book, rubbish. If I see one that's good, I'll keep it. This one's been hammered on the flat side. So if you saw the washer, you would see a what you can't hammer them people go oh give it a good hit mate you just wrecked it you fool because what happens then is see this black mark all right that's where it's compressed at one side and over here it's not at the other so where it's well sorry over here it's compressed and that's where it's been hit and crushed and there's not enough pressure anyway on the washer and it leaks right so all these copper washers you're doing your diff oil once in forty thousand. you can either replace it or you can reuse them a couple of times if you want. Doesn't bother me. That one obviously wanted to go in the bin because it landed straight in there like that one. You reckon we're going to keep that? What do you reckon? Let me know in the comments. Yeah, right. Okay. There's got to be one here that's all right, doesn't there? It's not too bad, but see you later. Um, that one. Roll. Well, it's not bad at all, except it's rusty and someone's again smacked it on the side. What are people thinking? Like, seriously, please watch my videos. Get yourself educated. Learn the right stuff. That one's not too bad, but, you know, if we're desperate... Uh, that one, yeah, no, we're not that desperate either. 
This one, you can see the stress that it's had on it from it's been over tightened. Okay, what do we got here? This one, actually, that's probably one of the better looking ones. But what are these dints that someone's been having a bit of a chip at it with a... Oh, and it's been hit on the flat side here. Probably got replaced because it was leaking. If they're leaking, they'll get replaced. Again, see on the top side of this one, you can see where someone's hammered it. People need to go and get themselves hammered, mate. People are just wrecking something. Look at that. I mean, what what are people thinking? I mean, oh, this is just out of control. Oh, look at that one. Give that one a bit of a tape, or what, would you, on that side? Look at that one. Yeah, that'll be a good plugger. Just give it a good hit, he said. Please don't just... Look, watch my videos, spend your time listening to what I say in the videos rather than reading stuff on Facebook, okay? Just be careful, you know, who you're reading and... Oh, my gosh, look at that. All right, so what have we got? We've got a bit of rubbish. We've got a few stories. Look, at how many people have got it flat on one side, you know? What's going on there? What are they thinking? This one was off a Range Rover. Unbelievable. Wasn't that fun, I've got to tell you. But that's how it came into me. And we got it out, mate. No stress. It's called a chisel. A good... I've demonstrated. Don't just get a chisel and start chopping up your plug. Now, what was wrong with this? A little bit rounded off on the edges. It's actually not too bad. We might have been a bit fussy that day and we've got a transmission drain plug. Oh, yeah, what do you reckon might be wrong with that? If people have worked on cars before us. That's what's bloody wrong with it. Okay, diff plug. It's actually not too bad. I'm tempted to keep that. Yeah, I am. But it must have been over tightened and stretched or something. So, see you later. There's always going to be a reason. That one, oh, that one looks pretty good, doesn't it? Hasn't been hammered. It's not too bad. In desperation, that could be a spare. Let's just keep one for a spare. Let's see how that one's been all smashed around the top edge as well. Look at this one. Been chiseled out beautifully. Wonder who might have done that. Use your sharp chisel to cut a nice little indent and then your big flat one to smack it to undo it, right? Don't worry about heating it or anything like that. Once it's gone, it's gone. Make sure you got replacement. K on the bomb that you, right? Rubbish. Rubbish. Another diff plug, you know the story. See you later. Yeah, none of these are really looking too crash hot. I mean, we could polish them up, make it look good for you. But uh, let's put that one. I was going to put it aside to compare with that one, but let's not. Uh, filler plug. Okay, what filler plug? Okay. Nothing usually wrong with a filler plug. Might have just got a bit overzealous and went, eh, let's just put new plugs in it because some rough nut's been in there. See you later. We don't need to keep old plugs, do we? We do need to tell you about it, though, so you can understand. That's not a bad way to hit it, but either way, you know. Yeah, yeah nah. More of these diff plugs. Oh, yeah, that one's a bit hammered, isn't it? Who's been at that one? 20, uh, 26 mil, maybe? Anyway. Look at that. This is just entertainment, isn't it? This one actually looks pretty good. We're going to compare those two. <coughs> Excuse me. All right. See you later to that one. And bye-bye, Sally. All right, here we go. All right, what do we got left? One washer missed the bin. Okay, what do we got? Let's pick. Let's pick the best one out of these two. Oh, I think the bottom one's the winner, isn't it? Yeah? That top one. See you later. Now we just got to analyze the bottom one and go, well, with the cleanup, that's a 90 percent, all right? That's a 90 percenter. No washer, good, because it's going to need a new one. That's a 90 percent. I'm going to clean that one up and set, keep it on the bench for a spare, for a rainy day, For because sometimes we like to collect things, don't we? And while you're on kayon.com.au getting your replacement diff plugs and tools, check this out. Kayon Aerial Mount Bottle Opener. Awesome. Every full drive should have one of these on their aerial, so that whenever someone's thirsty out in the bush, they just know to find an antenna to open their drink. Put it in the comments with your purchase. Anthony said, I need a bottle opener. Can you please throw one in? And he said, you might give me 15% off. <laughs> Let's see how that works out for you. Let's do it just for fun.